I hear the Lord saying, prepare, be ready. You see what's happening in the earth. Did I not say it before? Did I not tell you beforehand to be ready to prepare in every way that you can prepare, says the Lord God Almighty. This is just the beginning of sorrows. This is what has been prophesied by the prophets of old in the Old Testament and even in the New Testament of what was going to happen. And it is here. It is happening. It is coming together. He said, prepare your hearts. Prepare your souls. Prepare yourself spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and physically. And you ask why you're going through so many things, why you're being afflicted. The affliction is coming because it's part of the preparation for you to be able to stand, to fight, to not quit, to not run, to endure, to be at peace during the times of uncertainty, says the Lord God Almighty. He said, do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Do you trust me? Trust me, trust me even more so in this season. I've seen your pain, I've seen your affliction, I've seen <laughs> and heard your cries and your tears and your whys when you've asked why, why, why. And yes, 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 I, I could have taken my hand off of the situation, but I have allowed it and allowed it and allowed it for you to endure, for you to be strong, for you to be equipped of what is coming because of what is coming or what is already at your doorstep says the lord god almighty says the lord god almighty many will not prepare many will not get ready and they will miss it they will miss it they will miss it they will be panicking they'll be running all over the place and that is the time they're going to run from church to church, church to church, seeking help, seeking help. And, and they, they have to build that foundation in their lives, the foundation that is Jesus Christ. They must live in holiness, in righteousness, in obedience to me. They must draw away and worship me and build that relationship with me so that they can trust me when times like these come and are escalated there's an escalation taking place says the lord god almighty halehushi 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 ba hila boko rangada boshi kikele kantara boko yende de kikarabande de bosaya in the name of jesus father we come to you today O oh god in the name that is above every other name O oh god we acknowledge that you are god alone that you're in control you're in charge a man isn't they can say whatever they want or what they're going to do and what they're not going to do but they can't do it unless you say so and when it is the time to say so because you are in control. You are supreme, oh God. There's nothing too hard for you to do, oh God. We bow to your majesty today. We bow to your holiness today. We bow to your supremacy today. We, uh, we bow to you, Lord God, in honor and in respect today. In the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not, fear not, says God. But follow my instructions to the letter, to the letter, to the T. You must follow my instructions, says the Lord God Almighty. Completely, 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 says the Lord, says the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Se kani kurama ye teni ka ye soko nama de kanta raboko ye dokanta rabakaya. When 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 soldiers join, when they join an army, they 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 have to go through boot camp, and it is there they are kind of roughed up and 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 they're made to go through some arduous tasks and do things that they've never done before. And many of them quit boot camp and they say, I can't deal with this. It's too hard. The sergeant is yelling at me. Uh, um, why do I have to do? all these exercises why do i have to get up early in the morning why do i have to to to, to play or do all these things when it's raining and my, and uh, when the, the 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 ground is muddy and i have to deal with all these harsh conditions in boot camp it is to prepare you it is to prepare them for what's coming they don't see it while they're in boot camp 
but it's only when they are on the battleground they realize this is what they were training and equipping me for hmm. hallelujah how many of you are getting ready anybody getting ready anybody heeding this word this morning if you're now joining us for the first time go back and listen to it in its entirety says the lord god almighty amen amen Good morning to all of you joining us this morning. If you're here for the first time, I'm Apostle Lisa Sims of Across the Globe Ministries. My husband, Apostle Martin Sims, should be out shortly to join us. Amen. So we come against every spirit of backlash, retaliation, and counterattack of the enemy now in the name of Jesus Christ. We tear down every stronghold now in every person's mind. I command fear to go in the name of Jesus. I command panic to go. I command anxiety to go now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I release the, the peace of God upon you and the truth of God upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. May you not be moved. May you not be moved by any wind of doctrine or any wind of words being published published in the newspapers so you're looking at on on, on um, youtube or on your television may you not be moved but may you stand upon the word of god in the mighty name of jesus christ in the name of jesus blessed be your name O god blessed be the name of the lord god most high we shall raise our voices even louder when there's calamity when there's uncertainty when there's war when there's all these things that are taking place now that god would have warned us for thousands of years ago for some of the things that we're dealing with now god spoke god spoke the prophet spoke thousands of years ago we didn't think it would be happening in our time but here it is but here it is but here it is hallelujah i cover you all under the blood of jesus christ even now in the mighty name of jesus that you would be strong in this season and the seasons to come in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah Father God, I thank you for this word that you're releasing today through me. And I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that uh, people will listen, they will hear, they will understand um, what is going on, that they will take heed, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, that they will follow your instructions, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The word of the Lord to you today, and he's asking, are you touching me? Are you really touching me? Or are you waiting for me to touch you? Many, many, many Christians waiting for God to touch them, but they're not touching Jesus. They're not touching the law. Well, what does it mean to touch the law? When you're touching someone, you reach out and you physically touch their, touch them. Right? You touch them, uh, maybe their, their bodies, you touch them with your words, you touch them with your love, you touch them with your emotions. And he said, touch me in this season, touch me, says the Lord God Almighty. Don't wait for me to touch you, but you come and touch me, says the Lord God Almighty. We're going to look this morning at Luke chapter 8, verses 41 to 48. And this is a well-known story of the woman with the issue of blood. She had an issue. It starts off in verse 41, where Jesus was about his own business, and his own business was ministry and doing the work of the kingdom of God, fulfilling his call upon the earth, all right? which was to die for our sins, but also to minister healing and deliverance and preach the gospel and, 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 and minister to so many people as he did during his three years of public ministry on the earth. And it says, And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multi Tudes thronged him. So there's a lot of people, a large amount of people, and they thronged him, so they were pressing against him. You know how you see celebrities sometimes, and they're somewhere outdoors, and crowds come, and they try to press against them, and, and say, I want your autograph, and they're surrounding them, and, and, and they're trying to weave their way through the crowd. Um, this is what was happening in this time, right? So the multitudes were thronging him. They were pressing against him. They were coming to him, and the reason they were coming is because they needed help they needed Jesus they needed him to heal them they needed him to touch them they needed miracles they needed to be delivered and so they were thronging him and thronging him and thronging him 
Now, a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years, women imagine that, having a flow of blood for 12 years. The, the few days each month is hard enough. <laughs> um, she had spent all her livelihood on physicians. Just taken the opportunity. Sorry about that noise. Sorry. It's all right <laughs> to welcome my husband, Apostle Martin, this morning. Amen. All right. So where were we? Where were we? So she had an issue. Now, a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any at all. So she's spending all her money, but she's not being healed by any of them. She came from behind and touched the hem of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, who touched me? That's important. God is asking, who touched me? Are you touching me? Are you truly touching me? In this season, says the Lord God Almighty. When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, who touched me? It's like all these people around you. You mean who touched you? Everybody is touching you. That's what it was saying. How could you just notice one person touching you? God notices when one child of God touches him. It's important to him to touch him, to reach out to him, to love him, to worship him to touch his heart, to express your love for him and truly love him and be obedient to everything he's told you to do. But Jesus said, somebody touch me, for I perceive power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, because she tried to hide, she came trembling <coughs> and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Go in peace. Now, who was this woman? The Bible never tells us her name. She was an unnamed woman. And the reason she she an uh, unnamed woman, she was just an ordinary person, but she had an issue of blood, a flow of blood. All right. She was bleeding for 12 years nonstop. Ladies who are here today, you can you picture that bleeding for 12 years nonstop? No relief, no relief, no relief. And you see, it was not her period that she was having, but it was a plague. What is a plague? It's it's a disease. It's a disease spread by, <laughs> sorry, um, that's spread by bacteria. It's an infectious disease, all right? But a plague also is an affliction. Are you being afflicted? Are you dealing with an affliction in your life? Whatever that affliction is, whether it's an affliction in your health, your mental health, your physical health, your emotional health, your your, your um, um your mental health, your physical health, your emotional health, or spiritual health. Are you dealing with an affliction in your life? She was. Look at what it says. I'm looking in the King James Version um, in Mark 5, 25 to 34, where it explains that she did have a plague. And it goes on to say, And a certain woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had, she spent all her money, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. She grew worse. Are you in a situation where you're being afflicted, but it's growing worse and worse and worse, and you're wondering, God, why is it growing worse? What, why is it? I thought it's going to be better by now. I thought it was going to be well by now, but it is getting worse. When she heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment, for she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood dried up, and she felt, I'm reading out of Mark, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. It was a plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And the disciples said to him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee and saying, Thou who seest thou, thou who touched me? And he looked around and saw who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her daughter, Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. It was a plague. It was not a period for 12 years. A plague, again, is a contagious bacterial disease. It's an affliction. 
who was this woman she was unnamed nobody knew they didn't know her name and it's because she was an outcast she was outcast and outcast by society she was shunned by people she couldn't really go out in public uh, and so for 12 years she was considered unclean to even worship in the temple she could not be touched by anyone no one could touch her or touch her clothing and she could not touch anyone why 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 was this happening to her it's in the book of leviticus 15 19 to 27 which my husband is going mm. to read <laughs> uh, new king james version says if a woman has a discharge and the discharge from her body is blood she shall be set apart seven days and whoever touches her shall be unclean until evening Everything that she lies on during her impurity shall be unclean. Also, everything that she sits on shall be unclean. Whoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And whoever touches anything that she sat on shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. If anything is on her bed or on anything on which she sits, when he touches it, he shall be unclean until evening. And if any man lies with her at all, so that her impurity is on him, he shall be unclean seven days, and every bed on which he lies shall be unclean. Now this was pertaining to if she had a monthly cycle, but it continues in verse 25. If a woman has a discharge of blood for many days, other than at the time of her customary impurity, or if it runs beyond her usual time of impurity, all the days of her unclean discharge shall be as the days of her customary impurity. She shall be unclean. Every bed on which she lies, all the days of her discharge shall be to her as the bed of her impurity, and whatever she sits on shall be unclean as the uncleanness of her impurity. Whoever touches those things shall be unclean. He shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Amen. Again, if you now <clears throat> joining us, you could go back at the end of this, uh, whatever time to listen to this in, in its entirety. And so here she was, she was unclean. It says, if the woman has the discharge of blood for many days other than the time of a customary impurity or if it runs beyond her usual time of impurity all the days of her unclean discharge shall be the days of her customary impurity in other words she shall be unclean for the duration of time that she has that discharge and in this case this woman was unclean considered unclean for 12 years she was being afflicted whoever touched her was unclean whoever she touched was unclean not just her but her garments her clothes and Anything she sat on see she was suffering how many of you suffering because there's affliction that is taking place in your lives yeah that means if you think about it <clears throat> she couldn't have a proper normal relationship with anybody right. uh, you know she couldn't go shopping she couldn't go visiting relatives she couldn't you know walk around uh, anything I mean even if she did walk around and she was tired and she sat down on something that thing would be considered unclean until it was all washed so yeah. she was really restricted in virtually everything she could do mm -hmm. almost like if she was shackled yes 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 how many of you are feeling like that <clears throat> feeling that affliction um, that plague which is an affliction that this woman was going through yes but you're going through something maybe not <laughs> with an issue of blood but other things in your lives and it's an affliction she was suffering she she was isolated like you said mm. she couldn't be around people she would be afraid if she bumped into them what would happen they would be deemed unclean she was afraid if they touched her or brushed past her that she, she they would also be deemed unclean so she was was isolated she was shunned and she was lonely and another thing I thought about if she was married she couldn't even have sex with her husband because mm. she's bleeding mm. all right and so it goes on let's look at this um, 41 again 41 um, actually I'm reading through this again and behold mm -hmm. and behold 
there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had an only daughter about twelve years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Right. <clears throat> so this was taking place unknown to her, right? And her situation was about to change. And she would not have known it that Jesus now strategically was on his way to Jairus' house to heal his daughter. She would not have known. But as he went, the multitudes thronged her. She was about to experience a suddenly in her life, a miracle in her life. She was going to go from afflicted to being made whole in the space of a few minutes or seconds. And that's what God is saying to all of us today. Your situation is going to change. You're going to experience some suddenlies in your life. You're going to experience miracles in your life. And it's going to change overnight. Let's say on Monday you're struggling and you're suffering and you're hurting. And you think you can't go on anymore because it's so hard to deal with. Who knows what Tuesday will bring. Who knows if the next day or in the next moment that your situation is going to change. And even though it's hard what you're dealing with, God is saying to you, it will not last. It will not last. He said, I'm preparing you for the war. I'm preparing you for the conflicts in the spirit and what's happening in the world says the lord god almighty verse 43 and we're going to look at all of this in detail <clears throat> <laughs> now a woman having a flow of blood for 12 years who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any none of them could heal her she spent money on doctors. She spent all her money, not just some. None of them could help her. And she was growing worse and worse and worse every day. They couldn't heal her. She had an incurable disease, according to man. But Jesus, the miracle worker and the healer, is the only one who would heal her from this affliction. Let me tell you, the answer to your problem, to your affliction, is Jesus. Nobody else at all. God would use people to speak into your life, to minister to you, but it's still coming from him through the channel that God has, has, has released to minister to you. Amen? But she heard about Jesus. She heard how he healed the sick. He performed miracles. He delivered many from demonic spirits. He raised the dead. And she probably thought to herself, I got to go where he is so that I could be healed. But it risked her coming out in public. It risked her touching somebody or they touching her because she was bleeding and she was deemed unclean according to the law. But she was willing to break the law to seek healing. Nobody's telling you to break the law. But God is saying to break some mindsets that you may have that God can't change your situation. Break those things off. Uh, what people may be telling you that's contrary and go to Jesus touch him don't wait for him to touch you touching Jesus touching the Lord is again to worship him she was in the throng of multitudes oh my goodness multitudes they were surrounding Jesus they were following him they were touching they were pressing they were oh my god he, he, you know touching and, and so she had to weave her way through the crowd to get to him but as he went, the multitudes thronged him. That's what it says. They thronged him. A multitude is a massive amount of people. We don't even know how many people that were surrounding him. But for them to use that term, multitudes, it was a lot. They were thronging him. A throng is a large, densely packed crowd of people. So the crowd, it was dense. They were packed together. They were pushing and they were trying to get to Jesus. She came from behind. Verse 44. Mm. <clears throat> she came from behind and touched the hem of his garment, and immediately her flow of blood stopped. Immediately as she touched <clears throat> the hem of his garment, immediately her flow of blood stopped. As you touch the Lord and in worship and, and in love and in adoration, things are going to change in your lives. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I know that it's going to happen. Again, she would have had to make her way through the large crowd of people 
and again she was being careful not to touch anyone or having anyone touch her because then they would be come unclean but that didn't stop her that did not deter her she was on a mission she was going to come to Jesus and she's gonna say I'm gonna touch you and I'm gonna be made whole it doesn't matter how difficult my situation is the doctor said I will never be healed they can't help me people said your situation is the same or you're telling people and you're thinking to yourself I will have to go through this thing for the rest of my life it did not deter her at all it didn't stop her she was determined to get her healing and when she touched him she was healed immediately immediately notice again she touched him she did not wait for him to touch her where she touched Jesus was very important and very significant now she was unclean and she couldn't touch Jesus or even his clothing according to Jewish law all right and she knew that he couldn't touch her as well because of Jewish law she couldn't touch anyone or the person that she touched would also become unclean but she touched the hem of his garment that was still touching what she wasn't supposed to touch <laughs> all right she could have touched any part of his clothes but she chose to touch the hem of his garment why not another part of his garment why the hem of his garment it was not really the hem in the modern sense of the world where you have a hem to a dress or a pants and uh, it was not that hem she was actually touching what is called the zitzi and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly t-z-i-t-z-i-t -Z -Z it's the tassels on the hem of the garment that were worn worn by the Jews in that day each tassel had eight threads and five sets of knots which total 13 and so the sum of all of those numbers was 613 which was the number of the commandments of God in the Torah in the law all right and so uh, the, wearing that reminded all those who wore the tizzi the sidzi <laughs> of the Torah commandments as was specified in numbers 15 37 to 39 and Apostle Martin is going to read this good morning <clears throat> Pastor Jackie and everybody else joining us um, you can go back and listen to this word in its entirety again the Lord spoke to Moses saying Speak to the children of Israel. Tell them to make tassels on the corners of their garments throughout their generations and to put a blue thread in the tassels of the corners. And you shall have the tassel that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. So they had to wear the sidzi, all right, the tassel on their garments. All right, the corners of their garments, the four corners of their garments. See, the sitsi was sacred. It was sacred. It, 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 it was a constant reminder to think of God all the time. So when they looked at it, they, rem they were reminded of God. They were reminded of who he is. And, and, and the tassel served as a commitment to living a life of holiness and following God's commandments. That's what it represented him. So her touch, when she reached out to touch, she did not touch any other part but the sidzi, the sidzi. Right, the tassels of his garment because her touch was an act of faith it was an act of worship she was touching him she was touching God because she, she was touching that specific part because it was sacred it represented God and that's why she touched that specific part verse 45 and Jesus said who touched me when all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitude throng and press you. <clears throat> and you say, who touched me? <laughs> Can you imagine that? Like I said this before. I, it's just marvelous. So people pushing, pushing, they're thronging him, they're touching him, and they're reaching out to him. But this one person who touched him, and not just him, but the tassels, and he knew that somebody touched him to the point where the disciples are saying what do you mean who touched you everybody's touching you. you see 
Her touch was different. Is your touch different? Is, is, is the Lord sitting up and taking notice of your touch that is different to other peoples that are touching God? God is taking every person, every child of God into a place of intimacy and worship with him that they have never experienced before. Worship begins in the heart. It's the touch of the Lord with your lives, with what you speak, what you think, what you do, how you treat people all those different things and it is to also praise and worship him out of that love that you have for him that begins in the heart so he's saying who touched me who touched me and, and that 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 you know when other people are touching the lord and you might think things happening for other people in your lives and why isn't it happening for me and 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 god is saying i'm not ignoring you i know your touch i know other people are getting their breakthroughs but i know your touch i have not forgotten you says the lord god almighty her touch was different and it was 46. <clears throat> but Jesus said, Somebody touch me, for I perceive power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Amen, amen, amen. So what happened is that when Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me, she, he knew that somebody's touch was different. Her touch was different. He knew that power was going out from him. He knew that a miracle happened. He knew something happened in that person's life. And so when the woman, she saw that she was not hidden because she tried to hide because she knew she was unclean and, and she ventured out and, and decided, look, I'm going to go out in my condition. And, and her condition was really bad. What is your condition? And whatever it is you're going to, whatever the affliction is, are you still running after the Lord? Are you still seeking him? Are you still touching him in the midst of your condition, your situation? I have worshiped God in times where I'm in pain and I'm crying because of the pain but I'm saying but I love you Jesus I love you Lord he said don't hold back don't hold back come in the condition that you're in and touch me says the Lord God Almighty so she came trembling and she fell down before him in honor in respect in gratitude but also afraid because she wondered wow, what he what would he say everybody else has shunned me because i am unclean is he going to shun me as well but jesus wouldn't shun her right and so she declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she was healed immediately 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 god is saying there's going to be some immediate place in your life some 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 suddenly taking place in your life and he said you're gonna to, to prepare to move immediately because God is shifting and reshifting people in this season, his children. He's, and he's been doing it for a while. He's strategically placing us where he wants us to be because of the harvest. So you may have to uproot from where you are and go somewhere else. You may have to uproot from something that's comfortable and do something else. Because you cried out to God and say, yes, Lord, I want you to use me. And then God say, okay, I need to move here now. I need to give up all of this stuff and go and go because the bottom line is soul that's what's at stake and he said to her daughter be of good cheer he said be of good cheer don't worry about it yes I know you touched me it's okay you didn't do anything wrong I know you touched me I loved your touch I sensed it I sensed it he said your faith has made you well go in peace go in peace and God is saying to you today are you touching me are you touching me or are you waiting for me are you waiting <clears throat> for me to touch you or are you touching me in this season? Not the ways that you have touched me before, because that touch must be different to how you have touched me before. Because the season and the war has intensified. I prophesied this, other prophets have. Um, it's escalating. I prophesied this, we prophesied this at the beginning of the year last year, that is intensifying, and that out of that is going to come 
just one world war, which we know has been spoken in the Bible, but we never thought, I mean, if you ever thought you would be alive to see what's happening right now in the earth. And so you have to prepare, you have to be ready, and you have to get closer and closer and closer to the Lord than you ever have before. It can't be church as usual. It can't be the same things as usual. God will afflict us <laughs> because he wants to prepare us. It's not that he's ignoring us. He knows your affliction. He's not ignoring you. He's not ignoring us. Those are dealing with afflictions. We are as well. He's not really ignoring us. He might feel like, I can't go no more. I can't bear any more. And God is saying, come on, do a little more two steps. Yes, you're going to make it. Yes, I know you think you can't bear it, but you can't bear it. I want you to bear it because what's coming is more unbearable than what you're dealing with now. It's more unbearable. And I have to make you strong. I've got to make you tough. I've got to make you and bring you to that place where you can endure what's coming, what's already at your doorstep. <clears throat> yeah. If you think of athletes and everything, they train, a lot of them train for endurance. Uh, everybody's heard of a marathon where people run long distances to compete to be the first. And a lot of marathon runners know full well they have a thing called the wall. It's not actually a physical brick or stone wall, but it's a stage where your body runs out of energy because you've been on the go for so long and your body just wants to completely stop and you really think you can't go on. And the serious athletes know that they have to ignore the wall and just push through it and come what may they've got to carry on despite the body wanting to stop. <laughs> God is saying, I know it's hard, It's no, I know it's difficult, it's hard, you think you can't go anymore. Um, but he says, he, he knows why he's allowing it, and um, to just persevere, even in it, because you don't know when it's going to stop, but it is going to stop. It's going to stop when God says, it's going to stop when God says, okay, you're ready now, you're ready now, you're ready now for all that's coming. Uh, but some of the things that a lot of Christians are dealing with as well, it's not... Um, an affliction from the Lord, but there's a lot of this stuff is the warfare that's been sent um, by witches and warlocks and other agents of Satan. Mm -hmm. And so those things you rebuke, you don't receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just a couple announcements, or one announcement. A um, 2024 Warrior Women's Conference is coming up pretty soon. And um, it's on June the 21st and June the 22nd. Um, it starts at 6.30 p.m. on June the 21st. That's a Friday. And um, if you are, and it's going to be in Maryland, USA, you're supposed to be registering by tomorrow and um, making a deposit of $25 by tomorrow the 15th. If you haven't done so yet, please register um, by tomorrow the 15th. I'm going to try to see if I can get an extension on the time that I have to pay the deposit to Crown Plaza Hotel, the 2024 Warrior Women Conference, all right? So you're going to be registering. I'm going to put the post here in the comments. Um, the website you're going to go to is www.acrosstheglobeministries.org. The link is right there, so it should not be difficult at all. If you have other people coming, please let them know as well. Again, it starts on Friday, the 21st of June at 6.30 p.m. And... Um, it's, it's at that time, especially if you're working and you might be thinking, okay, is it all day Friday? I have to work at 6.30 p.m. so you'll be able to get there. And then it's all day on Saturday. Um, the total cost is just $170. It's a lot more than that. And we are actually um, taking up the slack and paying for all the rest of the money that is needed um, for this conference. Um, and so on Saturday, you get three full meals, um, breakfast, a buffet breakfast, lunch and dinner. And of course, you get the word um, of God, plenty of prophecies, answers to questions that you have had for a very long time. You'll be refreshed, you'll be reinvigorated to go on and go on and go on again. So please register um, today or by tomorrow. And um, on tomorrow, I should be able to give you all some more information as to whether um, I'm ex they're extending that time for me to pay the deposit. Again, we're making it very, very easy for you all to come. You just need to pay a $25 deposit when you register, and then you pay in installments 
and you wrap up all your payments by June the 8th. So you have a lot of time. Put aside some money. Put aside $5 a day or whatever it is. Um, and so that you'll be able to attend this conference. Very, very strategic um, what the Lord is going to do in this conference, even greater than what he did last year and the year before. And it was truly tremendous. Amen. All right. So at this time, uh, I believe my husband is going to close in prayer. <coughs> Lord, our almighty God, in Jesus' name, we come to you humbly in prayer. And we thank you, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord, for your wisdom. We thank you, Lord, for your power and the hope that you give us for a secure future in Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you've prepared a place in heaven for us. And that, Lord, that you are the great physician, you are the great healer, Lord. And sometimes while we have to wait, we know that you have paid the price for our healing, Lord, and it will come. Help us, Lord, to have more faith, Lord, and help us to rely on you. In Jesus' name we pray, and we praise you, Lord. Thank you for the amen. hope you give us. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. If you're joining amen. us for the first time, go back and listen to this word. It's a prophetic word at the beginning as well, in its entirety. But I just want to pray for, um, just release something to each of you this morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, and those of you that will be joining us later on, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come against, we come against weariness amen. and stress yeah. and anxiety amen. now, in the name of Jesus Christ, in your life. May the peace of God be upon you now, in Jesus' name, that the peace of God engulf you. May you understand what is happening um, in your life and why it is happening. It's not just about you personally, but it's about what God is doing in the in the earth in this time. He's raising up and he is gathering a remnant army um, to go forth into the harvest because the harvest is plentiful. Amen. And so, yes, it's also about you because as the Lord was saying before, he wants you to endure. So I pray right now for a special grace and anointing for you to endure the times that we are in because there are times that are coming that will be more unbearable to what you're bearing right now. So hold on. Do not quit. Do not give up. Hold on now. Hold on now. Don't let go. In the name of Jesus Christ, do not go backwards, but go forwards in the name of Jesus. Let the strength of the Lord God be upon you now in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke every spirit of torment that's tormenting your mind in the name of Jesus Christ that's telling you all kind of lies in the name of Jesus Christ. May you rebuke those thoughts. May you stand up and be strong. May you take up the armor of God. May, be, may you touch God as this word was released. May you touch him in worship. May you touch him with your lives. May you touch him no matter what the affliction is like this woman with the woman of the, with the issue of, of blood did may you reach out and touch him in the name of jesus christ god said i am your strength rely on me i am your strength i am your strength be not afraid be not afraid i'm still god i'm still on the throne i'm still in control man can't do nothing unless i have sanctioned it says god and i will allow what i will allow because of the season and the times that we're in says the almighty god so be blessed be blessed be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ, ladies, come to this conference. You're going to be equipped. You're going to be trained. You're going to learn how to stand, how to endure in these perilous times. The Warrior Woman, the Gathering of Eagles Conference. So if you can register, go now and register or do it tomorrow. Or contact me to say, hey, I really want to come and, and whatever it is your situation might be. And we will work with you to ensure that you get there. Amen. So, all right. God bless. Love you all. God bless you all. We love you all. Bye-bye. Bye. God bless. God bless.